Bad Lights Podcast. This is Kyle with Melissa. All right. So before I explain who you are, I'll give a little background story. We went to a convention. Pierre did not go to the convention. I tried to make an episode with Pierre, even though he did not go to the convention. And I told him his microphone was messed up and it actually was mine. So the whole recording is trash. So with that, you are who? Your wife. And you yeah, know, Pierre's going to be really mad at you. <laughs> Yeah, no, this is a horrible idea. Pierre's not going to be happy. Also, I'm not going to tell him, so he's going to think that he's listening to our episode Monday, and it's not going to be our episode. It's not going to be him at all. This is going to be great. To be more specific, we're talking about Anime NYC 2022. We were sent there as press. We did some coverage while we were there, but this is the real coverage right now. We're going to do all the highlights and everything we experienced. We also brought my niece one of the days that we went. So that's a whole story within itself because that was her first NYC experience and convention experience. So yeah, so we're going to go down the highlights. My wife here has watched one anime. Not true. Uh, yeah, what's the other one? The movie we watched, The Love the Story. Movie. <laughs> yeah. Ah, okay. It was yes. very good. Letter to you. Okay. So, <laughs> so between two. that and Spy Family, which we're not even <laughs> caught up on, this is going to go great. This is going to go absolutely fantastic. I love your So let's just start with the Crunchyroll booth. Because obviously this convention is sponsored by Crunchyroll, however you want to say it. So the Crunchyroll booth, big orange booth, as expected. And they gave out cardboard hats. Chainsaw Man is obviously really big right now. You know, there was a lot of cosplays of it. So I don't read the manga. And I now have spoilers just from people cosplaying. Because I didn't know what the gun devil looked like, but now I do. So... That's cool. But they also did a lot of greenings and everything. Like, their display itself was really big, and that was the first thing you walked into. Yeah, it was definitely the prominent booth out of all the booths. There was yeah. a lot of vendors. They used the whole upstairs area of the Jacob Javits Center, mm -hmm. which is way more than I thought it was going to be, on top of the panel locations, which is a flight of stairs down. Yeah, now the Crunchyroll booth, they were giving out a ton of stuff, posters, mm -hmm. little backpacks with the Chainsaw Man, yeah, those original cool. Chainsaw Devil bracelets. I mean, there was a lot of freebies generally, but the Crunchyroll booth was the first impression for sure. Our niece wore the Chainsaw Man cardboard hat and not correctly. So it actually looked like bunny ears, <laughs> not like a chainsaw, but actually like this way. So that was great. Yeah, but you know, a lot of people were actually wearing them. I was surprised like for a long part of the con. People like free shit yeah. and they get sentimental value to a little piece of cardboard. <laughs> and I bet if you go on eBay right now, they're probably 20 to 30 bucks a piece. I know <laughs> you were upset because we missed the Spy Family handout. Yeah, they had like a little, Anya. yeah. Well, that was also a hat, wasn't it? Yeah, a lot of hats, a lot of cardboard. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you didn't see as many of those. They're probably worth 50 bucks on eBay. Right. But also the Spy Family display was really cool too. There was a few photo booths. The Spy Family one was the living room. You felt the need to sit into the child chair, which was... A little red chair at the coffee right. table. Yes, I did. Made for a great photo. Yep. There was also the Attack on Titan, which was the basement scene where Aaron discovers that his father had a whole other family. And they actually gave out little postcards of that photo of the other family. So that's definitely collectible. I was pretty happy about getting that. What was the other photo booth? There was a few. I mean, I feel like there was probably some we even missed. I know Mob Psycho had a giant inflatable broccoli you could take a photo <laughs> next to. I'm not familiar with Mob Psycho, but we did watch a preview to, I think, season three in one of the panels. There was a lot of panels. We'll talk about probably two of them just because there was so many, but two of them really stuck out you know there was a lot on the show floor there was an aniplex booth where you could buy things there were general booths of the toy companies a lot of gunpla everywhere there was a, a gundam booth yeah no there was mystery boxes everywhere trying to get you to spend money which <laughs> of course we did but yeah there was a giant gundam booth where they had two giant gundams mm -hmm. but they're advertising obviously the new show which is the witch of something but they were showing the first episode a lot of people were actually blocking us trying to take a spy family photo because everyone was just standing around watching this tv above this stage and booth mm -hmm. the giant luffy set she was there, which actually we saw at New York Comic Con. I don't know if you recall. You have no yes. idea what I'm talking about. It's fine. <laughs> no, I do. <laughs> I will say there was a lot of vendors. I know main area in the back of that was where the voice actors were. We didn't really mess with that too much. The lines were long. I could have possibly did a few little quick interviews, but it might have been a little out of place being there was such long lines. But the show floor itself, a ton of vendors, ton of food, actually. I've never seen a convention have so much food. And yeah. let me say that, Anime NYC sent us as press, and this is the first time I even went to an anime convention, let alone the biggest one. They really, like, took care of us. I mean, walked in, no problem, skipped all the lines, in all the panels, they literally escorted us in with the rep. I mean, the email responses were nuts. They're offering us, like, yes. whatever Anything we want. Anything you like, need, let us like, know, right to the what? front. <laughs> 
like a, like a charger. I don't know what you possibly would have for me. Oh, yeah, um, that's probably what it was. If you needed a charger or anything for your device. Yeah, no, I gotta say it was probably the most welcoming press mm -hmm. experience we've ever had. We've done, I would say, most East Coast comic conventions now at this point as press oh, at yeah. least once or twice. Mm -hmm. So this was very surprising. You know, we've never dealt with this convention company either. So it was just nice right. to see the way they ran things. It was very relaxed, as crowded as it was. I mean, listen, it yeah. was overflowing. Let's be honest. It was hard to walk sometimes, but it was still a very calm vibe. It was very pleasant for a hectic convention, which is yeah. at the end of the day, what anything that happens in Javits turns into. Well, like you said, even entering, it was so much calmer than it usually is, which just kind of sets the tone for it. That was definitely pressed too. True. So my niece has never been to New York. She's never been on a train. She's never been to a convention. And her first convention experience was press. Right. So we actually got her a press badge as well. But just seeing her see the line, because we also didn't tell her what we were doing. Because we're traveling from Jersey and the whole way there, she's got an idea of what we're doing. And, you know, and some people try to slip in hints of what it was. And she's like, are we VIP? I'm like, no, nah, we're not VIP. So <laughs> we're pulling than VIP. <laughs> we're pulling up in the cab and she's seeing this massive line. And, you know, her face is kind of like, all right, I figured it out. And she's like, well, I wonder what all these people are cosplaying for. I was like, yeah, it's weird, right? New York City, people are weird. So obviously she figured out rather quickly, but just the experience of skipping that line and just her walking into Javits and just seeing this like grand building and like all of her favorite anime. I mean, she watches and knows more than any of us, if we're being honest. And oh yeah, she definitely had a great New York City experience for sure. And then the con was just icing on the cake. I mean, we didn't actually take her anywhere in New York City because it would have been a bit much. I did put an air tag on her just to check her. <laughs> I mean, she's going to be 13 soon. It's not like I don't trust her. But, but how cute. Her. She put it on her zipper and we're like, no, you have to hide it. <laughs> I want to go back, though. You were saying that we went shopping. Some of the deals there were pretty good. The Anime NYC sponsored merchandise store yes. had a handful of things. The main attraction of the merchandise store was Attack on Titan creator specifically made an art piece that was plastered on t-shirts, hoodies, tote bags, I think an actual print. So that was like the thing to get. So of course, I got a hoodie, she got a hoodie. And then they were like, oh, you spend 150 you get a t-shirt and a pin, which I think right. she was more excited about. <laughs> Well, because they let her pick any of the t-shirts, which I thought was cool. Usually it's like, oh, just this one. And she got to pick a pink one. So I just yeah, think I was, that... I was yeah, like, get was... the logo one. And she was like, no, I want the pink one. I'm like, all right, fine. <laughs> the art picture itself, though, is basically Levi being cool while they're eating, like, New York City street food in the background. And, you know, speaking of the creator, I want to go into that for a second, but Hajime Isayama actually was at the convention, but he was so ticketed with a lottery system that we didn't get in. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't get into his signing, we didn't get into his panel, and even his press, there was not necessarily a press moment for it, so it's not like we missed some exciting news that we should have been covering, we just missed seeing him. Right. That's the thing with conventions, there's always going to be something you don't get to. Mm -hmm. That was definitely mine, probably should have been excluded as press, honestly. Yeah. But it's a lot of different things in the panels where there was pre recordings of creators obviously it's different from new york comic con to anime nyc just for the fact of a lot of artists and writers actually live in new york we're talking about flying people from japan to come to this convention oh yeah it's a lot harder for them to get here but they did make video clips which was cool so we went to the crunchyroll industry panel that was a slew of previews and clips and recordings so tim was there and he's always funny and just to see him in person just from seeing him all over the internet for crunchyroll that was kind of nice to see out of that panel, is there any shows that you saw that stuck out to you? Obviously, you're not going to remember the names, but I can try and fill it in if you want to. No, you don't give a shit about any of it? <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> there was one, but I don't remember. All right, let me guess then. Was it the yeah. one where the guy turned into ice? No. So that one was called The Ice Guy and His Cool Female Colleague. Right. I don't know what the trend is with these long names now. Comics are doing it too. But yeah, so the premise of that one is the man mm -hmm. is a descendant of some ice spirit, and the woman is in control of her emotions. Therefore, they make a good match because every time he gets emotional, he turns all icy and freezes everything. So it's kind of like a, she has a cool personality and he has a icy superpower. It seemed interesting, definitely more like your speed. Oh. <laughs> yeah. The other one, my second guess would be saving 80,000 gold in another world for my retirement. Yes, I love that one. That so the premise it. of that one, which showed a great preview, actually, basically the main character finds a way to portal into a fantasy world. 
didn't she lose all her family and then she ended up finding this alternate reality? Yeah, that's pretty much every single anime. <laughs> Everyone loses their family and then finds but... a way. Real inspirational. But yeah, she figured out that the gold <laughs> was easier to come by in this fantasy world and then she could exchange it into yen in the real world. Yeah. It's a funny premise. I think that one we'll definitely watch together. Oh yeah, um, I'll definitely you know, check that one out with you. <laughs> if I could ever get you to catch up on Spy Family, which I think you're still three behind. <laughs> that's not fair. <laughs> We watched how many before? Yeah, because I knew many. we were going to a panel. Yeah, but and I we... knew spoilers. And what we happened when we got there? No, there was no spoilers. They were awesome. Really? Yes. So let's talk about that one for a second. <laughs> the Spy Family panel was actually right before the industry panel. And that one showed, I would say, almost a half an episode that mm -hmm. did not release yet. They said it literally was finished Wednesday and they showed it to us on Saturday. Yeah, I think it was about 15 minutes that they and, showed us. And, and they also did say that even if you didn't catch up, it shouldn't be a spoiler. So there's a new character, a new spy that works for his agency yeah. her name is frost and she wants to replace your as his wife in the mm -hmm. whole situation so they show the two of them meeting well yeah she showed twilight. up at the door when yeah, twilight so was out being a little sketchy there and she kind of wants to kill your and then of course anya is reading the minds as the clip ended and is kind of like what the fuck is happening right now yeah. It was this back and forth, and she was watching both of them, and just was like, the big eyes. <laughs> and it's finally like, oh, she's a bad guy. George Wada explained how there's two studios involved in it, and that's what makes it such a good partnership, because they're able to bounce back and forth in different areas, probably based off of, like, their expertise. The one studio is wit. I mean, that's kind of why I like going to as many panels as possible for conventions, because you hear things that are not necessarily breaking news, but you hear things that you would never hear elsewhere. Like, where would we hear that 20 studios compete? for this the guy who's in charge of the show like literally in charge of the show and a bunch of other shows he's the one that told us a little story like you don't yeah. get that anywhere else like that's just a very unique experience that makes conventions i was gonna say too though you could actually see he was like so excited to see everybody and to see like the excitement from the crowd and like, he was really happy to be there and i also like that we had a lot of translators yeah yeah <laughs> that was just cool to have translators you felt like you were getting something more meaningful well that's how i feel too he really wanted to connect with everybody yeah and then they made us yell some things for video what was it i don't even know there was oh. a few different circumstances where we were on video yelling and screaming yeah. Yes. Waka Waka was one waka of them. Waka Waka, yeah. But then they said Waka Waka when we were taking a picture because everyone just had it in their head. But it was supposed to be for the video. Yeah, so if you look hard enough, you'll probably find us randomly in the front row of a few different panel yeah. photos. Like these giant group photos. There was also a video game that they announced, which is super interesting, called Jaime's Quest. And it's basically set in the 90s with like a Y2K kind of villain. Which is an interesting choice for just an anime con to have this kind of thing. But it's anime style, but what's really interesting is it's Game Boy Color. Like they're making a cartridge for Game Boy Color in 20. 22. And it was actually playable, and they had giant controllers and screens where you could actually try the game. And it kind of looks like a Zelda, Pokemon kind of Game Boy game. So that's pretty interesting. I'm pretty sure I have a Game Boy Color buried somewhere. It might be missing oh, yeah. the battery back, but I could tape it. But yeah, so that was pretty cool. Jaime's Quest. Definitely look up that trailer. That was just something unique that came out of it that I wasn't expecting. The convention was like any other convention. Tiring and too much to do, where you did as much as you could. We almost bought swords. <laughs> You almost bought swords. Well, my niece wanted an Attack on Titan sword. And she wanted one because I said, let's buy swords. She didn't right, think about a sword until you said it. <laughs> she agreed nice as soon as I said it. And then she was like, well, if you get Attack on Titan, you need two each. So then we almost bought four swords. She cared more about the stuffed animal teddy bear than your She did. Sword. She disappointed me. <laughs> they were basically the same price, too. Yeah. And then she tried to buy like, more stuffed animals. Like, no. Too many stuffed animals. So honestly, yeah, the sword would have been better in that moment. I just wanted to send her home to her parents with a sword. Like, I thought that would be funny. There's always next year. But yeah, so let's just talk about all the other things we bought. She bought stuffed animal. We didn't buy swords. But she did buy a My Hero Academia mystery box, which all yeah. conventions have these mystery boxes. But Better than I expected. Cool stuff, yeah. yeah blanket I mean, stuffed she animals. Got a pillow mm -hmm. and a pin, I believe. Stretchy toy of mm -hmm. All Might. That was pretty cool. She walked away with between free things, the merch we bought, yeah. and then the mystery box. She easily had like 15 to 20 things that she brought home. Whether oh, yeah. it was a pin or a stuffed animal or a whole sweatshirt. She made out pretty good. But also, can we talk about my personal favorite? Is it the cosplay? Had, well, not yet. Oh. There was a funny cosplay, but the cotton candy. Oh, yeah. It deserves a, its own little moment because they had character cotton candy. So she got the Hello Kitty. Yeah, there was Charizard, Pikachu, Charizard. and then a general rainbow one. It's huge. But they were really cute. The food, too. There was, yeah. like, dumpling stations and bubble Sushi. tea everywhere. 
Yeah, sushi station. They had the bubble tea with like the ice cream in it. Yeah, that was really good. That was worth yeah. everything. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen food <laughs> on the main floor though. Like yeah. normally it's just downstairs. But it wasn't like intertwined as much, which was good. Yeah. So let's talk about the cosplay because I know that was yeah. your actual favorite thing, not just the cotton candy. <laughs> Which part? Which was my favorite? I will say, there were some really good ones. I saw a lot of Peach, which, I mean, I got excited about because that's my favorite character to play mm -hmm. when we play Mario Party. Are you trying to make fun of me with this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I got excited when I saw, I don't know what she was dressed as, do you? Mm, no, I no, point. I needed to get Kyle's attention and remove him from where he was. She was wearing a very small skirt with nothing there and it was just her whole entire butt and it was beautiful she looked very good <laughs> you thought you saw her again but this one wasn't wearing any underwear it was not visible gotcha yep <laughs> well, i'm glad you enjoyed all of I that i did i enjoyed it <laughs> cosplay generally though a lot of you know a lot of attack on titan i didn't yeah. see any titans which i was very upset about like i wanted to see yeah. titans running around like they do in mass that's too hard <laughs> too hard to I've bring i've seen so many videos of it i wanted yeah. to see mob of titans it just didn't happen no but um, there was a lot of your and anya's which i appreciated oh spy family generally yes. i think was the highest rate of cosplay that yeah. i witnessed chainsaw man obviously something more than the cardboard ones there was just like some regular like beanie type hats too with little chainsaws on them that was pretty mm. cool but there was some like legit chainsaw man cosplays that I don't know how they could see or move or function with all of that going on. Right. But yeah, there was a lot of good cosplay. I think there was more cosplay than any convention I've ever been to. But I guess that's a bigger part of yeah. anime. You're not so much getting things signed, so you're more so there to view. So the effort, rather than going to meet people, goes into what you're presenting. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty cool. I liked that a lot better. Like, every second of this convention was entertaining due to that fact. Mm hmm but I also have a feeling that next year there might be more people who show up. Because even in the panels, when we would watch the videos, they would say, see you next year. So I have hope yeah. we'll get more. But honestly, though, with COVID and everything, it's not surprising. Yeah, and they were cool about that, actually. They had a little health check before you even got to get your passes. So that was done well. Oh, yeah, they were definitely it was smooth. a lot of precautions. It was quick. Yeah. But I just mean if it's only five years and two of the years we weren't really together, doesn't give them much time to really get over here. So that was Anime NYC 2022. Again, thank you for sending us as press. It was yes. our first anime convention ever. It was my niece's first convention ever. First time in New York City. So it was really a fantastic experience. And Oh, yeah. You know, I think this is part of our convention list every year now. Like, I think this is a just part of tradition, which is get a little nuts because we literally have like October, October, November. Yeah, there's but, so much in those months, I know. but that's okay. <laughs> but I guess I have to watch more now and get ready for next year. I'm a pandemic baby when it comes to anime. Like, I'm not sure. going to lie. I started with Sword Art Online and my niece quickly was like oh now you like it watch attack on titan mm -hmm. and that's what honestly pulled me in where if i have time in my life to watch a tv show which is rare that's what i'm watching i mean that's what i'm looking for i mean mm -hmm. i have watched what 10 or 15 shows already yeah I mean, and i watch I, pieces I, of them <laughs> yeah you're more into the opening intro music and all of that yes i do love that oh which yeah. one was my favorite wasn't it attack on titans no, it was sort of online. Sort of, yeah. The first season. I can't that even think of so it outside good, my head now. Yeah. But it was good. But, and then Jujutsu Kai's in the outro. Yes. You're right. I that, do like the music. <laughs> yeah, you do. But that's fine. So, yeah. So, hopefully by next con, I've corrupted you even further. You always do. <laughs> yeah, I do my best. Panelites Podcast. Panelites Podcast. I love how I promised her we were going to have authentic gourmet Italian food. We're leaving and no one was hungry and our feet are blistered and we're like, all right, we have so much to carry because we just bought $500 worth of merchandise and all this. Not to mention the winter jackets, right? That I got stuck with for some yeah, reason. You, you did carry the winter coats all In day. a duffel bag. It seemed like a good idea. I was going to check it. <laughs> we just never made it there. We got too excited. It's just funny because like I said to her, it's going to be hectic till we get there. Like <laughs> we're going to have to run. It's going to be a little push and shovey like we're gonna have to get a cab like but once we get there everything will be cool mm -hmm. and when we leave you're gonna have gourmet italian food you've never had before in new york city <laughs> so we're leaving. Say, it's such a good restaurant i'm very disappointed i don't even know the name of it that's the best part <laughs> yes
I just but know where it is. I don't even we know how to get there. No, I don't know how to get there. But we weren't hungry, in my defense. So we leave. And we're like, we'll get food when we get back to Jersey. Well, the train was a nightmare. It's the most packed train I've ever been in. We had to stand most of the time. Yeah. Some older woman was trying to have a conversation with my niece. She completely shut this woman down by just not it even... Just her to me. Yep, not even paying like, attention to her. It's like, you want to yeah. talk crap? Like, not answering you. So, like, we had such a train experience. We get off the train, we get our car, and our ticket won't scan, and we can't get out of the goddamn garage. So I'm yelling through this microphone, open the gate. Like, I don't this care. not nice. <laughs> what money I owe you, open the gate. You have my license plate, you have my yeah. phone number. Like, I've given this man so much information. He would not let us out. Like, we were literally held captive. And then, by the time we got out of there, we're starving. Like, yeah. we're starving. And none of this probably would have transpired the same way if we just ate in the city. Yeah. So, we got a Taco Bell. We went from gourmet to taco bell but according to you taco bell mm. is gourmet <laughs> it's like your go-to so who are you kidding we you are not happy, sponsored man. by taco bell Madeline's podcast i'm still tired from all of this it was great though she will never forget her experience with her aunt and uncle she better not <laughs> Madeline's podcast i was gonna show my shirt okay